Eric Kirk of Effectitron, and with the new release of Cinema 4D R26, there are a lot of changes, especially for us Redshift users and people that aren't Redshift users. One the huge thing that they are now have access to is that if you have Cinema 4D subscription, you have access to Redshift now. It is the CPU version of Redshift versus the GPU version. It's a lot slower but you will be able to use all the redshift lightings and tools and stuff and so you'll still be able to upgrade and get the redshift bundle with it or go ahead and get the max on one that comes with everything if you want to uh if you are interested in and if you like redshift so now you can at least try it and then if you want it to be about 10 times faster go ahead and get the gpu one probably um so let's go ahead and just take a look at some very quick changes um, this is going to be the first in a series of what's new with R26 and Redshift and just R26 in general. So it starts off when you open your scene, we have it set to the standard renderer. And so basically we don't have any Redshift stuff up here. We don't have any Redshift stuff up here. We just have things that work with the physical renderer. And so if we want to see anything Redshift now, we actually just need to go over here and change our render settings to Redshift. And once we do that, you see we still don't have our Redshift option up here. We do now have a Redshift tab here so we can do our IPR and the viewport and stuff. And I will say, I think, I don't know if this is in the patch notes or anything of the update, but I think it does, the IPR works a lot better now inside the viewport. I almost never used it, and now it actually seems to work decently well. See? So, but basically all of our Redshift options are no longer up here. They are now over here, and they've just replaced those things that were there for the standard renderer. So the cool thing is, is now that we have it set to Redshift, anything like, like Cinema 40's Infinite Floor and stuff like that that wasn't supported by Redshift is just gone. So it's like, this doesn't work. We're not even going to let you try to add it. It's like Redshift Light. Anything that's not a Redshift Light is just taken away. So when you're using the Redshift renderer, the only tools you have are tools that are going to work with Redshift, which I think is a really smart thing to do. It's a little confusing at first because all of the Redshift icons have been changed to, to look a lot more streamlined with the rest of the icons, but it doesn't take long to get used to. These are pretty cool. Uh, basically, the big changes uh, are those as far as the UI layouts and then as far as the materials. We're going to cover that in the next video, but there are a few big changes as far as the Redshift finner settings real quick that I want to show. And that's going to be, I think that the IPR render works better. You can do bucket render, clay render, pre tessellation, all these things. You can even turn on post effects inside of here. But if you are used to having the Redshift tag appear and you just want that back, all you need to do is go to Edit, Preferences, go to Redshift underneath your render option here and check Redshift main menu. And doing that will bring that back up here. So now this will be more familiar. You have all your objects, your lights, your camera material, everything back where it was. And you can access your render view a lot easier this way as well, rather than having to go into the window and going down to there. So very cool. So this, I mean, this looks really nice. Uh, we're going to cover a few things in the next future videos. We're going to go over the new material systems. We're going to go over the new node system. We're going to go over the new camera tags and stuff like that and where those are. They've moved a lot of stuff around. But firstly, I want to talk about the render settings in this one because that's what we're talking about what's changed with Redshift and all you people that have never used Redshift before now have access to the CPU and the people that do have the bundle have access to do hybrid rendering. So in order to do that, we need to go to our file, go to edit, I mean, and then go to preferences. And we're going to scroll down here to our renderer and we're going to choose Redshift. And you have hybrid rendering as an option here. You can turn that on. Honestly, I'll turn mine I turn mine off. You have the option here to use your CPU and your GPU. If you have like a 30 series RTX card, it's probably going to be a lot faster, but we'll go ahead and turn that on and I'll show you exactly what that looks like. We get two boxes, two buckets. And you'll see that one bucket starts to go a little faster than the other bucket. And that is because the GPU one is much faster. You see our GPU has finished all of its buckets and we're still waiting on that bucket for the CPU. So you're kind of better off just turning off that CPU because it would be done by now. So honestly, the hybrid render right now for me is making it take longer. All right, cool. Be sure to check out the next video. We're going to go over the material nodes and things like that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.